Okay, well, thank you. Uh, thank you all, actually, for being here. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the Eurasian Research Institute for, in, for inviting me. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, Kanat uh, Makhanov, of course, who was uh, a former, former student of mine at KIMEP, um, uh, and an excellent one, <laughs> excellent mm -hmm. student. And uh, he, took, he uh, took a class with me uh, called uh, Population and Environment. And I, I learned, learned later, and he also took uh, geography with me as well. Mm -hmm. And I later learned that uh, he was very much interested in geography, which for me was, was sort of, uh, uh, well, not only a surprise, but also um, uh, good news. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, I, I, I see Kanat on a regular basis at, uh, we, we go to the same gym also. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, see, I see him working on his biceps. <laughs> uh, well, it's, it's, as I said, it's a distinct pleasure to be here. Um, I've, I've been following the Eurasian Research Institute uh, for, some, for some time. And uh, I only now, today, realize where, where you were. Uh, I, used to walk, I used to walk by here um, on a regular basis. Uh, and so anything, anything related to Eurasian research is something that, of course, is of interest to me. I've, uh, I am uh, an economic geographer, um, and my regional, we could say, specialty, my regional interest, of course, is, is Eurasia. Um, so any, any, any institute uh, that's, that's devoting itself to Eurasian research, for me, is, 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 uh, is something of, of much interest. So, as, uh, so thank you, again, for your invitation. Uh, today, uh, ah, before, before actually, I, I must say one more, one more thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know for a fact that everyone in this room uh, has some knowledge about the Otto C and the Otto C crisis. So my, what I'll be talking about today, um, I do not want to talk a lot about the Otto C crisis. Um, now, and that being said, uh, I read uh, Daudian uh, Abien's piece in the uh, Eurasian Research Institute, uh, uh, the e-bulletin that came out at the end of March, and I agree with his. Is Daudian here? Yeah. Yes. Ah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I and I and I have to say, and, and I, I I really enjoyed that. Um, and I'll say that, you know, his his uh, his point. Uh, I agree with his analysis completely, and that is, um, you know, very often we hear these, uh, you know, popular press, and, and actually we'll we'll see that very soon in this presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, very often we hear, ah, it's the return of the Otto C, uh, and and I think that's somewhat problematic, um, and Dowdan has pointed this out. <laughs> the Otto C is not coming back. And, and that's, we can discuss that at another time, but that's, um, it, it may be feasibly possible, but as, as, as you say in your piece, it's, it's highly, highly, highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. In fact, won't happen anytime soon. But at any rate, I just wanted to, to mention that. Mm. So, uh, let's see, do I just use the, Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, ah, so one of the things that Kanat and I, and, and I discussed um, recently at the gym, while, while, he, was, while he was doing biceps, <laughs> uh, he said, well, come, come talk to the, come, come talk to our, our, and show us your photos from the Otto C. Now, I am, uh, and, and I'm coming at this uh, as, a, as a geographer, an economic geographer, uh, but I think for today's, for today, I'd like to, I'd like to, um, 
come at this as a photographer. <laughs> so I'm really into photography. Uh, and and uh, so there's, there, we're going to see a lot of photos. And um, I, uh, I was, I was, I was uh, graciously given a cup of Turkish coffee about 15 <laughs> minutes ago. So I, I might be a little bit... <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, so again, thank you, and, and I'm I'm coming at this as a geographer, but and and also as a photographer. Uh, and so what I what I'd like to focus on today is is simply, um, you know, Kazakhstan's region, Kazakhstan's northern Aral Sea region, um, and and even more specifically than that. Uh, uh, post the 2005 completion of the, the new dam. Um, and we'll, we'll get into that. Um, <clears throat> so my, my, my interest is really on the improvements in the ecological conditions. And I, that's, that's one piece, the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that, that has been fairly well... Uh, described and and uh, I'm also interested in the in in the links between you know the environment and the economy mm -hmm. all right and so as we go through these images today um, I would like to uh, sort of through this through the through the through the lens or as Kanat said in his description through the prism mm -hmm. of uh, of, of environment, the human environment sort of yeah. interaction. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, and of course the Northern Adel Sea region, I, ah, all right, so let, just, I typically don't like to, I don't, I, this is the first time I've ever shown images mm -hmm. with me in them, so, uh, but but as I was as I was putting this together, I, I was realizing that um, you know 2005 and 2018, 2005 was my was my first trip ever out to the Aral Sea region. Um, now, and then I got thinking, well, a lot has changed since 2005. You know, between 2005 2018. Uh, first of all. One of the things that's changed these these ships, the famous uh, you know the, the the ship graveyard, the ships in the desert, are not are no longer there. Um, mm -hmm. We'll get to that. We'll get to that in in a bit. Um, and of course now, you know there's there's sort of the water has returned. I suppose I suppose over the course of what would that be 13 years, mm -hmm. I suppose I've, I've I've put on some weight as well. <laughs> Nothing much changed. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, and and one of the one of the things that uh, I have a I have a chapter in a book, uh, the environmental crises in Central Asia, a uh, book chapter that looks at um, well essentially the sort of modest improvements in ecological conditions in Kazakhstan, in northern Aral Sea, and also modest. Uh, improvements in economic situation in the Aral sea, uh, northern Aral Sea region in Kazakhstan, and that came out in 2016. So that, um, so that's what much of this is based on. Uh, and I was also, I was also part of uh, with with uh, uh, Philip Micklin, as uh, an American geographer who was a friend of mine. Uh, He's published uh, voluminously on the Aral Sea um, crisis, as has another friend of mine, Nikolai Aladdin from St. Petersburg in Russia. And he and I, uh, the three of us, were there at this uh, conference on uh, uh, sustainable development. Um, and this was in 2017. So. Well, I, we, we don't necessarily need to get into um, each of these pieces of related literature. Uh, I've got s 
some of mine, uh, but the one, the first one, of course, is what much of this is based on, uh, that the book, the book chapter on recent, uh, and I'm using the term partial ecosystem restoration and partial economic recovery. Um, because I think it's important that, I mean, well, we'll get into this later, but the Otto Sea is not coming back. The Northern Otto Sea is not coming back. The Northern Otto Sea is much less than what it used to be. Um, but it has been, but the key is it has been stabilized. Well, we, we, we can talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but one of my, uh, and then Michelin and Aladdin, um, uh, they have sort of a, a well-known piece in Scientific American, and uh, but at any rate, I don't necessarily need to get into each of these. We can go back mm -hmm. um, if anyone wants to talk about any of these, any of these later. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, one of my favorite uh, trips out to the northern Otto Sea was in 2000, 2011, and I was part of a I was. I was part of a uh, um, expedition with, again, with Philip Micklin, Nikolai Aladdin, uh, a number of other researchers, um, and uh, we we basically circumnavigated the northern Otto Sea, and we'll see photos a little bit later. Uh, and one one of the one of the places where we went on this expedition was to uh, Barsakelmies. And uh, so this is near the entrance to the Barsakelmies uh, Zapovjednik, the um, nature reserve. <laughs> now, for those of you who know Kazakh, <laughs> that sign, now at the time, of course, I had no idea. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I know maybe this, this many words in Kazakh, <laughs> and, and, but, but, uh, what I learned later, of course, that quote. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I just want to make sure. Yeah, uh, nature. So nature and humanity are twins. Is that roughly what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. We need to save nature to save ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, when I when I I had one of my students translate that, and maybe it was Kanat. I don't remember. No, no, that was. Oh, no, it could have been. But um, I thought, wow, that's perfect, All right? And to me, at that, at that, you know, at that place, at that time, that sign is is really summarizes my entire uh, viewpoint. For the, for the entire for, for the Otto Sea crisis, recent developments in the Northern Otto Sea, because and and as as this quote uh, below the sign, uh, a very a famous uh, famous uh, water scholar yeah. uh, Sandra Postel, mm -hmm. I know. Uh, that this this quote from her. Excuse me, this quote from her. Uh, is really also sort of a guiding, um, uh, a, a guiding element for me as well, uh, and that is that the Otto Sea and the, you know the 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 the, the situation um, is is, and as she says, a most striking example. The interactions between the health, yeah, the health of an ecosystem, and that of the people, populations. All right. And so to me, that, that quote is also something that, that is very poignant for me. Um, and <clears throat> so this, this sort of frames uh, everything that I've done, uh, any of the research that I've done on, the, on both the Otto Sea and also <clears throat> the recent developments in the northern Otto Sea. So <clears throat> now, as, as we've said, uh, and, and I think, as, as uh, Daudan had mentioned in his piece, you know, we, 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 hear, we hear, we see all these headlines. Ah, you know, the, the return of the Otto Sea. 
the the rebirth, you know, the rebirth of the RLC, uh, the recovery of the RLC, and I think uh, you know, looking looking at these headlines, we think, wow, wow, the RLC is coming back, and and yet if we do something as simple as look at say two satellite images, one from say, you know, pick a year, 2000, uh, and this is, here I'm just talking about, of course, 20, 21st century. Uh, so if we would just look at the past, say, 18 years, uh, 2000 to 2018, we say, well, wait a second, is the, is the RLC coming back? And of course the answer is no, it's not. Um, Now, that's not to say that there hasn't been some improvement because, of course, there has. Now, uh, actually, I can use the, of course, now, uh, well, actually, you guys, as Dowden mentioned in his uh, piece in the bulletin, uh, you know, he was talking, of course, about the construction of the, of the, of the uh, Kokaral, the dam and dike complex. Uh, right, right here, and that was actually, um, of course, partially World Bank funded, but also uh, government of Kazakhstan played a big role in this as well. And actually, I'll, I'll make that point. I think, um, you know, obviously, the political will here in in Kazakhstan is very important. And so, at any rate, <clears throat> since the completion of the dam and dike here. The, uh, the northern Aral Sea has been stabilized. And in fact, the level, the, the, the level and area, well, actually, um, the volume and area increased just under 20%. Um, <clears throat> uh, and it's, it's stabilized at, I believe it was 42 meters uh, above sea level. But it, it raised two meters from before, and now that's where it is. And it has been stabilized, uh, and so that dam, okay, that dam, and of course, uh, also there were there was some uh, in the delta, uh, there was some 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 rechanneling of the Sirdaria, uh, some projects in the Sirdaria delta to help uh, um, um, increase water flow as well. But this project, of course, is, is what everyone is talking about, saying, ah, the, the auto sea has been saved. Well, um, certainly that has, that has that, that's the story here. That dam and the resultant uh, improvements in ecological uh, conditions and economic conditions. Now, uh, and we'll say, and I'll say pretty quickly, uh, it's a lot of it has to do with fish. <laughs> so uh, I thought, yeah, Kanat, Kanat said to me, you know what, show some of your photos. And I said, okay, okay, I'll show some photos. And so what I wanted to do, now this was the, this is the, uh, this is the expedition that I was mentioned earlier in 2011. A lot of, a lot of people uh, who were, on that reference list um, who have published on RLC or were on this expedition. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got, I guess I have some uh, just images from the region and I just thought as an introduction here we can just look at some images from some of the villages in, in the northern RLC region. Now I don't, I may not have the order Correct, but we'll we'll be seeing some uh, photos from, of course, Aralsk, which is you know the sort of central place mm -hmm. uh, of the region. That's that's the region's central place. Uh, and uh, let's see, Bogun, no, I think Ah Karateren is one. We'll we'll see some images. I think uh, Tastibiek as well. That's a Actually, a, a big fishing, well, an important fishing village. Akispe is, we'll see Akispe, and I believe 
Akbasti, and also Kulandi. All right, so these are, these are just some of the villages that, I'll, that I want to show you some of the images of. Um, Yeah, and then and so let's just let's just leave it at that. And I will show a photo of where is it? I think it's twelve. Ah, excuse me. I also said um, we were down in this is the former island of Barsaka de Mies, and uh, there's a ah yeah. So there's a ship in the desert, and and I don't know. I didn't know where to put. I don't know what where that is. So I just said somewhere very remote. So we'll see that soon. Uh, but that's but that's uh, way down in here. But at any rate, okay. So we're going to just look at some of the uh, some of these villages. And by the way, Acas Bay. I mean, this is ah. So in terms of development, so we're starting to get an indication of of sort of you know infrastructure. Many of many of these villages. Um, were without electricity until 2009, um, and you know we're 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 getting a, an idea of some of the, the infrastructure. Uh, actually, also I will add that um, inside of many of these homes. Now, this is this was in 2011. Many inside the who knew uh, excuse me many inside many of the homes now. Okay, would now have electricity. Now have uh, you know television sets. Now have refrigeration. Uh, and so, this is all sort of a recent development that I think is positive, of course, for the region. Um, <clears throat> so what did oh yeah, this is Akes Bay, man, and I couldn't believe, I could not believe uh, just the sand. God, I just couldn't believe how windy the sand was blowing. Uh, sand had been just piled up against people's homes, mm -hmm. as you can kind of see uh, in, in these. But yeah, so this I think gives us a good indication of, of some of the development uh, issues here. This is Kulandi. Uh, I hope I'm I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, uh, and again, you know, I think, you know, we get a sense of now. Now, of course, on the environment side, all right, on the you know, development, environment, on the environment side. To me, this is this is a beautiful landscape, mm -hmm. uh, and I really, really wanted to show this one because, you know, I'm 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 there, thinking, wow, this is this is beautiful, uh, you know, in, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, ah, this is Karateren. Mm -hmm. Now, ah, so there were a couple more development, development um, elements that I'll mention. <clears throat> There's been an increase in housing construction yeah. in the villages uh, because there's been an increase in income coming in from fishermen. Yeah. And so we've got new housing development and of course uh, we can't forget about the education element. Mm -hmm. So these, these, uh, these kids are going to school, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, ah, another another environment one I like. Um, this one is uh, well, <clears throat> to the sunset domesticated camel, mm -hmm. uh, and this is uh, that's right near Tastubek. Uh, let's see another. Uh, ah, all right now, man, I was I was so happy to be on on the former well the former island of of Barsakilmies. And uh, I suppose that's one of the, okay, maybe I know 15 words in Kazakh. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I know Bar Sakhir Mies, and I know what it means. And when I came back, um, my students liked the fact that I said, you know, I went, I went to Bar Sakhir Mies, and I came back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and, and, that, and that was, you know, uh, it was it was one of the highlights of my time here, to be honest. Um, and of course, that was uh, we saw the former the weather weather station that was on the island, uh, some research stations. But again, obviously, you know we see the sort of 
uh, Soviet era um, infrastructure and equipment and things that um, that litter sort of the island. Now here's another another of my favorites actually is this I had, I had pointed this out this um, the ship I had pointed out on the map and uh, again I, I <laughs> didn't know what 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 to put uh, but so I decided to just put you know somewhere very remote now this is in fact uh, oh yeah it's the auto the auto Schmidt mm -hmm. um, and in fact I remember uh, Nikolai Aladdin who some of you may may know his name he's a Russian scholar um, aquatic biologist actually and he is he's written in, in Russian language just I think he's probably the most published uh, researcher in Russian in the Otto Sea situation. Mm -hmm. At any rate, he was saying that at one time he was he was on the Otto Schmidt because because he was saying that this is a, a research vessel. Mm -hmm. um, but at any rate, yeah, and and uh, this is one of the last remaining uh, ships in the desert. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, let me let me just. Uh, if we have time, I, I just let me let me uh, sort of. I have a, a quick story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I remember when I was in uh, an undergraduate in the United States, and I was in a I was in a geography class, and this was this was before the class. This was in the Soviet mm -hmm. days. Okay, I'll say nineteen. It was nineteen eighty nine. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, I'm looking at my. It was either 89 or 90, but at any rate, I'm looking at my geography textbook, and I'm just sort of flipping through, and I see a ship in the desert, and I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's strange. What, why is there a ship in the desert? And then I read, whoa, wow, where is this? You know, at that time, you know, I was, what, 19 or whatever, and Uzbekistan? Yeah. Huh? What? And uh, you know, I thought, wow, that's that's really strange. And and for some reason, I remember that. Um, of course, at that time, at that time, uh, you know, I had no idea that I would be, I would be living in Central Asia. Um, certainly not for 15 years. But at any rate, uh, and nor did I ever think that that would become sort of my my research focus. Um, but I do, I do remember that, and that's seeing the ship in the desert um, sort of brought up that memory. Now, but, but most of them are gone. And so then we say, well, why is that? And um, let me also say that, that well, that the, the, they've been, well, scavenged, um, <clears throat> been harvesting the scrap metal, mm -hmm. all right. And mm -hmm. and by the way, this is in the the former harbor of Aralsk. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I just wanted to, yeah. And these guys, I remember seeing these guys, um, and they're basically by hand. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of, I mean, there, I didn't see there were no welders. There were no, at least, well, I think I may have seen some welders, but basically they're dismantling the ship by hand. Uh, and, and I thought, wow, that is, um, you know, obviously labor intensive. Uh, and, and I also, of note here is, of course, the rather, I, I just wanted to get, I had written down uh, the rather inefficient mode of, the rather inefficient mode of transportation. <laughs> but at any rate, um, you know, so that's another sort of economic aspect to this is that, you know, the, sh the ships in the desert have all been harvested for scrap metal mm -hmm. and then eventually export, exported to China. So there's that piece. Uh, now this is a billboard in, um, yeah, a billboard in, uh, in Aralsk. Mm -hmm. And I hesitate to say, but I guess I will, our former, former president. Um, and uh, I really like the saying, too, the slogan on, under, uh, you know, and I, 
you know, project now, Cocorao, I see that, but um, the project of the century, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Which, to me, I, man, that's, that's also fantastic, because that sort of has, to me, that, that has a little bit of a sort of Soviet uh, t t um, element to it. Uh, yeah, okay, so... Now this is the dam. Uh, now this was from uh, 2000, 2017. Actually, I was in. I'm in a helicopter with um, with uh, uh, Philip Micklin and Nikolai Aladdin. Um, and actually, some representatives from the World Bank. And this was in 2017. So we're looking at the, the Kokoral Dam, uh, and again, from the north, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and that just, to me, was kind of a neat viewpoint. Well, first of, all, it, it, first of all, it was the first time that I had ever been in a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was neat. Um, yeah, okay. So now, the other thing that I'll also say, now... Um, and this was actually from last summer. I was out there in, in August, um, 2018, and from the from the environment side, another another uh, key piece to all this is the is is not just it's not just you know the return of the water, the decrease in salinity, but to me, um, you know, I'm sort of into wildlife, and I think the birds is an important. Piece. You know, we've got we've got a return of many um, many different migratory bird species, and to me, that's that is uh, that is of, of interest to me. So, so on the environment side, I thought I would throw another um, another environment photo in here. Now, but of course, the story is the fish, mm -hmm. right? Now, the fishing. You know, fish are sort of a unique, uh, I don't know, what to say, a unique species, right? They have this sort of inherent value, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a not just economic value, right? We harvest, you know, we, 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 have, we, we, we harvest, we, we process, we export. So it's this inherent sort of economic component to fish. But there's also uh, this environmental, eco ecological piece to fish, right? Now fish, fish, excuse me, fish uh, are, are sort of important, you know, for their, for their um, uh, ecological services value, right? Yes. So they're in, ind indicative of, let's say, a quality environment, yes. all right? So we have this important on the ecological side and important on the economic side. And to me, that... Uh, well, that's that's fascinating, right? So fish, and by the way, I I grew up fishing. I enjoy fishing. I eat fish. I have uh, you know fly fished for fish for for much of my life, um, and so at any rate, uh, I think that's that's really the story, and it and it and it also, in fact, it's the ecological story, but also the economic story. So. Um, yeah, again, this is near uh, Tastibiek, and uh, uh, right, so harvesting, uh, and of course, this is just below the dam, and I say below, I mean south mm -hmm. of the dam, and this was, this was last summer, 2018, um, they're now fishing fairly intensively just below the dam. Now... Uh, lots of water is coming through the dam. Uh, in 2017, there was a case where a lot of fish, now I didn't see this, I had heard it, um, a lot of fish had died below the dam. Mm. I mean, just a mass die-off, die off, and I've, I've, uh, I've forgotten the word in Russian. Zvor? Is that, no? Um, but anyway, there was a mass die-off of fish. And 
Ah, it's been you. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> so, um, below the dam. So I, I suspect that uh, you know they've they've started just saying, well, rather than Dying. us having all these dead fish around, let's harvest them here. And but at any rate. Uh, so again, fishing is the is the is is the story. Now, I have to say that I I've got I I understand I've got some missing data values in here, and I'm not I'm embarrassed to say that this is not a this is not a complete table. Uh, now, the complete set of data I have through 2014, um, but 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 not from to 16. Now, I will say that well, the two the two important pieces in my in my mind are basically this column and this column. Mm -hmm. Now, why those two columns? Well, <laughs> the total total catch, and of course, this is in this is in metric metric tons. All right, so we've got. Uh, Total harvest um, from basically 05 to 16. Now, again, incomplete data. I apologize, uh, but what we do see, of course, and again, since since the dam's the dam's completion, mm -hmm. we do see this rather, we could say, dramatic increase. All right, uh, to over 6,000 tons metric tons uh, today. So, um, now let me just make one point, as I, as I, as I, okay. In 1960, uh, it was estimated that, that the nor in the northern part of the Otto Sea, 16,000 metric tons were harvested, all right? So, Clearly, we're we're at a level below what it once was at, at the Adal's fisheries peak, but but uh, clearly that increase, all right, that increase has has been has been a positive has been positive news for for the northern Adal Sea regional economy without question. And the other column that I wanted to that I wanted to to highlight here is this one, all right now. Uh, the pike perch. Ah, let me let me we'll go, so we know what we're talking yes. about. The suda, yeah. exactly. And uh, the, the 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 pike perch right now are the um, the most sought after uh, of the fish species. And this is really, especially in terms of export revenue, um, you know, extra regional export revenue coming in. It's the pike perch. Uh, and the Sudak, yes, and um, at, at, at the moment, only one of, there are three, and we'll see some photos soon, three uh, fish processing centers in, um, in Aralsk. Uh, one of them, only one of them has been licensed to export Sudak to the European Union. Um, but of course, exports are going to Russia. They're going to Turkey, mm. uh, and, and of course, they're also at ah, Georgia was another um, place mentioned, and um, but also exports, extra regional exports, you know, to other places in, in Kazakhstan as well. But at any rate, so uh, so we have also seen an increase in, you know, a fairly dramatic increase in. Pike perch harvests, and I think that's, in terms of the regional economy, I'd say, uh, you know, that might be the most important, um, <clears throat> particularly with the demand, with the demand in Europe. So, ah, okay. So now, so we've got pike perch. All right. Now the first, the first. Uh, let's talk about the first processing center. Ah, all right. So this is the. Um, well, the Kambala Balik, mm -hmm. uh, the Kambala Balik uh, fish processing center that used to be um, it used to be a, a Soviet era bread bread factory, mm. and, uh, and and 
we have, I have some photos of workers. Um, again, we're processing. Now this, this one, uh, they, do some, they do some pike perch, um, but they also make a lot of, a lot of the other fish species. They make uh, some of the various, uh, um, like beer, beer snacks, mm -hmm. like fish necks. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, ah, in fact, I think that's actually what they're doing here. Actually, no, wait. Let's go to the next one first. Um, yeah, these are pike perch necks, apparently. Mm -hmm. And I've been told that these are delicious with beer. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and so, uh, and, 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 um, so that's really sort of what, what the, uh, the Kambala Balik factory um, specializes in. Ah, and I'll say that, that they, were, they were around in, in 2000. And we could talk about the Kambala as well. They were sort of, that was an introduced species, we would say flounder, mm -hmm. uh, that was not native to the RLC. They, they introduced uh, the Kambala to the RLC. Uh, well, when the salt, the salinity levels were so high that no other fish species could live. But at any rate, this is... This, this factory uh, processed Kambala back, back in the day. And now, just to give us an indication of this particular plant, in year 2000, <clears throat> um, it employed 2000, uh, excuse me, three, no, five. They had five employees. And by 2014, they had 30 employees at this particular. So, an increase in employment. And for those of us who are into regional economy, uh, you know, income and employment, this is, this is uh, representative of sort of an important um, stimulus, we could say. All right, now let's, ah, I kind of like this, kind of like this one. Um, now this is, this is uh, the Aral, let's see, ah, this is relatively new, actually. New, I say, Completed, built in 2009, with significant funding from, as I remember, the Jap Japanese and Korean, uh, if I remember correctly. And yeah, and and uh, this is this is you know we can see it. this is a new new facility, um, and this is really one of Aralsk's, well, they're, they're proud of this, and rightfully so. Uh, there's posters and billboards around town of this, of this new uh, fish processing center. It's called the Aral, well, it's called the Aral Fresh Fish Processing Center. Uh, and here, employment has increased uh, in 2009 from 30 to 17, 17 employees, excuse me, 75 employees uh, in 2014. Sorry, right, so we, we went, went from 30 to 75 mm -hmm. in a fairly short period of time. So again, uh, <clears throat> employment uh, increases here at this at this one, and this gives us an indication of uh, some of the some of the machinery equipment inside. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the building I think was was financed primarily from Korean financing and the machinery, I believe, had Japanese funding. But at any rate, uh, so that's the Aral Fresh Fish Processing Center. And this is the, well, these, this is, uh, ah, yes, the Aral Service Center. Hmm. Now, this, this one, uh, and we say, wow, gee, that looks, well, that was, that's on the grounds of the old Aral Riprom uh, fish factory during the Soviet, Soviet days. This is the Aral Riprom factory. Um, uh, oh, and so the new one, this new, the Aral Service Center um, opened in 2010. When it first opened, it was, uh, they had, excuse me, they had 12 employees and by 2014, they had 30, so we had a slight, you know, we had a significant increase in employment 
um, at this factory as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, I regret to say that I, I don't remember the director, the president's name, um, unfortunately, but I, I did want to include this because I was happy to see that, that he was a Yankees fan. <laughs> New, York, New York Yankees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, some of the some of the some of the workers uh, here as well. Now, ah, and so in 2017, I, I made this image, and I think I was so happy to see this sign. Uh, and and to me, this this you know this this idea of hope, you know, hope and optimism. And hope, optimism, and pride, right? I love Arao. Now, now to me, uh, you know, I think that that says that says you know that speaks volumes to me. Um, and these are emotions that I think have long been absent uh, from from anywhere in the Arao Sea region for for uh, for a long time. <clears throat> so. Uh, we're 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 almost done. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I've been I've been interviewing um, well I've been interviewing people in in the in the region since uh, well since probably 2006 uh, and but more recently uh, I this is a subset of some of the responses I've gotten from people. And again, my, my highlight is really on you know, the environmental, ecological improvements and economic improvements in terms of economic development. So, uh, you know, I'm certainly not going to, I won't, I won't, I won't read this to you, but, uh, you know, I think some of the key points uh, we, we do see uh, we do see, you know, I think, I think particularly here, by the way, Zauriash uh, is a friend of mine, uh, the director of the Bar Sakim Yes Um But I think, you know, we're, we're, and again, it's not just fishermen, right? We also have these, so these multiplier effects in other sectors as well, right? So we have, we do have this this economic stimulus coming in um, and these, these sort of spillover or multiplier effects in other sectors, uh, particularly I think in construction, all right? We have lots of new housing construction uh, and, and education, of course. Wow, and I see, you know, economic development. This is fantastic. Uh, and so that's a sort of recurring theme in many of these you know, the sort of improving socioeconomic development. Also, we, we see quotes about increases in, um, well, of course, in income, increases in employment. Uh, lots of, you know, there's, there's somewhere one where they're saying that, ah, the fishermen, fishermen are the wealthiest people in town. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're all building new houses. They have new cars. They have new boats. Um, so that's, that's obviously a, an important one. Um, okay, so I mentioned construction. Overall, uh, okay, an overall sort of improvement in socioeconomic development, but also, again, with the construction. Um, uh, I, like, I like this quote. Yeah, yeah, this one you didn't hear. There's been positive changes throughout the region from ecology to economy. Mm -hmm. And I and I didn't I didn't I didn't ask her to say that, and and that to me, uh, is really that's that's the story, right? And 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 again, we go back to that quote. Uh, we go back to that quote, you know, the sort of close linkages between the environment and the economy. Yeah. Um, and that that to me is 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 fascinating as a as a geographer. So. So this is our final slide, and uh, you know I think this was a refurbished uh, mu mural in Aralsk. 
Uh, and, you know, I, I think it's very symbolic. You know, we see, we can see that, you know, the sea has returned. I should say returned. Uh, the ships have returned. The fish have returned. Um, and I think this mural represents positive news. You know, it's indicative and representative of the positive news uh, for both the region's environment and development. <laughs> so I'd like to thank you all for your attention uh, and I would, I would, I would be very happy to, to, to have any discussion with, with, with anyone, any questions. Um, you know, we, we looked at a, a lot of photos, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm hoping that maybe that might um, stimulate some discussion. So, yeah. anyway, that's... Thank you. Thank you so much. Very, hey. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.